Hello again. I've been working on the software and I think I've made good enough progress to show what I've been doing. So we had the old version where it was kind of dumb and it would just turn on and off at a set time and every time I did it, it would overshoot. So I took my idea of changing the time that it turns on and off and waiting for the temperature to stabilize and put it into practice. So I'm going to get this started and then while it's running I'll talk about what I've done. So we can see the screen and we can see the power. So I wired up the power indicator on the toaster oven so that it's also controlled by the solid state relay. So I've got a visual indication of when the elements are turned on. I've added an option that was called manual, but I've since changed that and, and evolved it. So this is now semi-intelligent. I've made some really crude routines that allow me to just change numbers with the rotary encoder. And rather than having to scroll all the way up and down, we can just change the number, choose which one that we want to work one, and then when we go to the end and they're all highlighted, that's the number. So we're going to boost up to 100. So now this is working. We can see they've got the power light on. So just here we have two indicators. Blue means that the element is on and then the colour at the top determines what zone that we are in. So at the moment we are red and that is represented by the percentage that we have just here. So our target is 100, we're currently at 31 and depending on what percentage range that we are in it will change how long it heats for. But then we have this um, temp time and we want to wait for that to get to a certain length showing that it's no longer rising and that the temperature is stabilized. So now it got to two and the element has come on again. At the moment an element is on for 15 seconds. So our graph shows that we are rising so the element has gone off our temperature is constantly rising and our temp time is at zero while it's rising. So we're now into um, over 80 and below 50 so our, our range is now showing orange and the temperature is still rising So we're starting to see it gradually slowing down. So we're getting to one second of a stable temperature. The one is gradually staying on longer. Our graph should be starting to smooth out. So there we got to two, so the element has come on again. So again our temperature is starting to rise. We've now gone above 50%, so we're in the yellow range. And again our time, temperature stability time is sticking on zero. Gradually it'll go to one, and then when it gets to two, the element will turn on again. So I've set up uh, several zones and I can have as many zones as I like. The zones can be programmed to turn on for as long as we want and then wait for the temperature to stabilize for as short or as long as we want so that we could have a slow boost or an aggressive boost. So now that we're in the higher temperature range we need to see three seconds So there we go, three seconds and the element has turned on. 
So we're, we're having a gradually longer time to wait for it to stabilize before we heat again. So when we get to over at below 20%, we should be in the lime range. So we're still heating, although a bit slower. There we go, the element has come on again. And note that the element stays on for a shorter period. So we're now at 20, we've gone over 20, and we're in the cyan range. So the next bracket is 5%. So we're now within 10% of our target temperature. We're now into the green range. I think this one is also three seconds, but the heating element stays on for a little bit less. Now we're in the 1% range. And we've, meet, we've managed to get to our target without shooting over like we did before. We were going over by 10 degrees. So now that we're over target, it will stay off. And then when it goes back down to 1%, it's programmed to see if the temperature trend is cooling, and then it will quickly blip the element. So regardless of how long it's waiting, it, it sees that the temperature is dropping. I'm in the 1% range. I'm just going to blip it for half a second. So we're still in our rain, target range. We're in within 0% of our desired temperature. And it just dropped to 1%. And you can now see it thinks that it's cooling because it was dropping and it was blipping the temperature. It just put us back up to our target temperature. And it will just carry on like that. So my next task is to take this gradual build up and do our quick temperature boost and then maintain that. The maintaining part is not the issue. It's just using this technique, how quickly can we get the temperature up from where it is stably without overshooting massively. So that is my next challenge. Okay, uh, don't suppose, I don't, okay, I don't really see the point in just letting this run forever because it's not the most interesting thing. I've really enjoyed uh, doing this so far. It's been really interesting and uh, a good challenge of programming and uh, the logic and the thought process to be able to control the temperature. Um, and yeah, I feel like I'm making really good progress on this. So once I've done the next part, which is to get that temperature boost up and I can do a natural reflow curve, then we can actually give it a try and if all that works I can then put everything inside the case and make it look a bit prettier. So thank you for watching and as soon as I've got the temperature boost part and a reflow curve I will do the next episode.